Okay, guys, welcome back. We are continuing our discussion of JSON Web Tokens. So in the last video, we generated a token and returned it back to the client. In today's video, we're going to validate incoming tokens and extract the data from it. So at a very high level, before a request ever gets to your controller, it first passes through Spring filters. So every request goes through a Spring filter, and then it can go to the controller, and then it passes through it again on the way out. And technically, this can be many filters. This is why it's called a security filter chain. So in today's video, we're going to create our own filter to handle the incoming requests. So here's our big to-do list. In our JSON Web Token Utility class, we need to add two more methods, one for validation and one for extracting the username. We need to add a filter. This will look at the requests coming in, check the authorization, and allow responses. This is where we're going to call the validation and extract username methods that we defined in our util class. And just FYI, this will extend the once per request filter, which is built into Spring Boot. And then we need to update our security configuration. So we're going to add a new bean for our filter. And then we need to add the filter to the security filter chain. OK, let's get started. OK, so in the previous video, we mentioned two methods that we need to complete on our JWT util class. So the first one we will write is a method for validating the token. So public static Boolean, it will return true if the token is valid. We're going to name it validate token, and we're going to pass in a string of token. We're then going to call the JWTS.parser dot set signing key and we pass in our secret key. And then we do parse claims JWS and pass in the token. And then we're going to return true. However, this can throw an exception. So we're going to wrap this in a try catch block. And there are a bunch of exceptions that you can catch. We'll catch two of them, but there could be more depending on what you're looking at. So we're going to catch a signature exception. And right now, we're just going to print out signature exception to the console. Of course, you would want to handle this more appropriately with a response entity. We're also going to catch an expired JWT exception. And we're going to print to the console expired token exception. And we're going to return false. Next, we need to implement our method to extract the username. So we're going to say public static string extract username. We're going to pass in the string token. And then we're going to return jwts.parser dot set signing key, pass in secret. And then we're going to parse claims JWS token. And then we're going to get body and then get subject. When we run this method, we are expecting a valid token because it will have been validated prior. OK, so next up, we need to add our filter. So we're going to do new Java class JWT authentication filter. And it's going to extend once per request filter and then implement the overridden method do filter interval. Looking at this, it passes in a request a response and a filter chain and could throw an exception. So every request that comes through can be sent through this filter depending on how we configure it. So that's why we have the request coming in and then the response going out. So a couple of notes, the token will be sent in the header of the request and it's going to be in the format of bearer with a space and then the JSON web token. So passed into this method is our request. So we can access it directly. So we're going to say string auth header is equal to request dot get header. And the header name is authorization. We'll then set a string named token is equal to null. And then we want to set the string token to our JSON web token. But we got to make sure that it's valid. So if auth header is not equal to null, meaning it's actually there, and auth header starts with bearer with a space, then we can take our token and say equals auth header dot substring and we pass in seven. So what this does is it cuts off bearer in the space and you're left with just the JSON web token. There are of course 
more elegant ways to do this. We're just trying to brute force ourselves to get to the end state so you can see how this works. Next up, we need to validate our token. So we're gonna say if token is not equal to null, and then we need to call our JWT utility class. So JWT util dot validate token, and we pass in the token. So if it's valid, we then want to get the username and see who has access to our endpoints. So string username is equal to jwtutil.extract username, and we pass in the token. We then need to take the validated username and put it into our security context holder. So we're going to say authentication auth is equal to new username password authentication token, and we pass in the username. We also need to pass in credentials. Our credentials were already validated, so we're gonna pass in null. And then we also need to pass in authorities. We're not dealing with authorities right now, so we're gonna just say collections.emptyList. We will then call securityContextHolder.getContext and set authentication where we pass in the auth. Lastly, we're gonna do filterChain.doFilter where we pass in the request and the response. So again, this is not the most elegant code. The point is we need to brute force our way to the end just to make sure you understand how it's working. Okay, making our way back over to security configuration, we left two notes, meaning there are two things we needed to do. So the first thing is we need to add a bean to instantiate our filter. So at bean, public JWT authentication filter, JWT authentication filter, this is the class we just created and we're going to return a new instance of JWT authentication filter. Then up in our security filter chain, we're going to add a filter where we pass in the JWT authentication filter and then username password authentication filter dot class. Okay, our token should be working now. Let's make our way back over to Postman. We're gonna start in the same way we did before. We're gonna do a post request on the login endpoint which will generate a token. So go ahead and copy this token. Now, when we go to another endpoint, we had already defined, for example, get all products, and we say no auth, we get a 403 forbidden. So now let's switch this to bearer token, and this is where we're going to pass in our JSON web token. Go ahead and paste it in, and we have access to our products. Let's check to see if this is working. So let's delete a character and we get a 403 forbidden and a signature exception, which checks out. So there is another way you can do this. If you move over to the headers tab and you add authorization as a key and then a value with bearer space and then your token, this will still work. And if we make our way back over to authorization and click bearer token, you can see we get this little message saying this is a duplicate header and will be overridden by the authorization header generated by Postman. So basically it just has some extra functionality to help you specifically with authorization. So either one of these is a valid way to input your JSON web token. Okay guys, that concludes our JSON web tokens. I'll see you in the next video.